line in the comment box, whether you're watching this on Facebook or on the Crafty Gemini YouTube channel, let me know that you can see me and hear me. Awesome. Let's just take a couple minutes here to say hi to some people, people that I see coming in, coming on. Hi, M, uh, M. Colleen from Southern California. Jackie's tuning in from Maryland. We are in North Central Florida here. I'm coming to you from my home studio and I'm wearing the apron I'm gonna be talking about tonight for our Flash Sale Friday bundle. I can already see a lot of Let's you. Take a couple minutes. Yes, the audio sounds good to me. Sounds like everything is working. Good, good, good. All right, Carolyn says, I finally catch it live. Welcome, Carolyn. You're here, you're live. If you're watching the recording, feel free to watch the whole thing. If you enjoy it, still give it a thumbs up. Right now, if you're watching this on Facebook, feel free to give it a share so any of your crafty friends who are on Facebook at the same time as we're live right now can tune in. I'm gonna be sharing with you what comes in the Flash Sale Friday bundle. We um, have less than 30 left, is that right? 30 of the bundles left to go right now. So if you want to get in on it, make sure that you click the link that we're including in the chat box for you. And it's also included in the video description box below the video if you're watching this on YouTube. So let's go over what is included. Then we'll jump into a little demo and I'll talk more about the apron. So we, uh, the bundle that I've put together includes the supplies that you need to make this apron. It's a crisscross apron you can see on the back. And it's kind of like a one size fits all, but not really because the pattern includes um, different places where you can make adjustments to make it small, medium, large, extra large. And then they also in the instructions include where you can uh, lay your pattern pieces on the fabric fold if you need even more room. But I'm gonna talk a little bit about it because I tried it on my husband and on myself and I just made the large size and I still cut two inches off the length and I'm about five foot nine inches tall. So if you go with the small on this and you still make adjustments especially if you're maybe sh shorter uh, it's gonna be a super quick and easy fix this is the crisscross apron pattern by Mary Mulari who has been uh, publishing books and patterns since like the 80s she was a guest on uh, Nancy Zeman's PBS show so you may be familiar with her books, her patterns, or whatever. And this one is called the crisscross apron pattern. So tonight's flash sale includes the hard copy pattern, okay? And then I included, this is kind of like a mystery bundle as far as the fabric goes. You're going to get two one-yard cuts of two different fabrics. You can feel free to use the fabrics to make the apron, or if you have other fabric in your stash, you can do that. Because they're one-yard cuts, I thought that making this a mystery would be kind of fun uh, for those of you that want to tackle this apron as a, a different type of a project. You can use the fabrics that come in here or because they're one yard cuts, you can always use them for other stuff. I mean, one yard of fabric, whether you're a quilter or a bag maker or you make a lot of kind of small gift ideas and stuff, gift items, um, this is gonna be a lot of fabric. So this, you're gonna get two different yard cuts. So this is just one sample. I'll pull another one here out of a kit just so you can see. They're just different types and they're all designer quality quilting cottons. Some are more bold than others. Some feature larger, uh, uh, larger scale prints like this large floral. This fabric I had in my stash. So the fabric that is required for this pattern is two one yard cuts, okay? So I said the bundle tonight includes the pattern two one yard cuts. You'll also get a 1000 meter spool of 100% Egyptian cotton thread, which is my favorite to use for most of my quilting projects and stuff like that. Or when I'm using cotton fabric, this is a Wonderfill thread, Wonderfill confetti or tutti, which is their variegated thread line. They're all 100% Egyptian cotton. Some of you are gonna have a random solid color in there. Some of you are gonna have a variegated spool of thread. Then I went ahead and included a water erasable uh, fabric marker. So you're going to get that too, which is going to come in handy for you to mark the placement of the pockets on this, uh, on this project. Okay. So you got the fabric marker, two one yard cuts, the hard copy pattern, a thousand meter spool of thread, and then my little, of course, um, autographed or hand signed um, thank you card with the little Crafty Gemini sticker. So that is what's included in tonight's Flash Sale Friday bundle. Those of you that already got in on it, congratulations. I think you're gonna have a lot of fun making this project. I'm going to um, talk a little bit about and share some tips with you. 
The bundle does not include a video tutorial because the pattern is pretty straightforward and all the instructions are there. But if you do get in on a bundle tonight in the emailed receipt that you get, you'll see a link for a video tutorial that I found on YouTube by Nancy's Notions for this same pattern. So if you feel like maybe you don't understand one of the little steps or you need a little bit more of a visual, that's going to be your go-to. So that's already included in your emailed receipt. So just be on the lookout for that. The pattern itself is just this one sheet. Okay, there are three pattern pieces. One is for the main body, and you'll cut two of those because, in case I didn't mention it already, the, the apron is reversible, okay? And I like to trace out my patterns. I, let me not say I like to. I tend to trace out my patterns because I don't want to cut into the original. And because it was only three pattern pieces, I went ahead and just traced them out. So this is um, the crisscross bands where we connect the crisscross on the back here. And this is where you'll see two different lines. One it says for small or medium, and then the longer version is for large and extra large. So I just cut mine at that um, just to try it on, which is a good idea to try out. If you're not sure where you want to make adjustments, you basically go through, construct the whole thing, and then you just pin the straps crisscross and slip it on and try it. If you find like the neckline is too low, then you can cut some of the crisscross straps like I did on mine, okay? But it's a strap, the pocket that you end up cutting four out of, because remember it's reversible, so there's two here and two on this side, okay? And I'll flip it off and, and turn it the other way in a minute so you all can see. And then the other pattern piece is just this. So it's a quick make. One way that you can cut, because you'll need to cut on the this pattern piece on the fold out of both of your fabric pieces. So I just have my fabric folded the way that it comes off the bolt. I just lay it on the fold one on top of the other. And if you have a brand new blade on your rotary cutter, you'll be able to place the pattern piece on it and cut through all four layers at once. That will definitely make quick and easy work of cutting out your pattern pieces, okay? And then everything kind of nestles inside of itself. So as you're cutting, you'll see where the pocket uh, template piece fits in for you to cut that out, and then the strips go across the side. Now, I will say, when you're cutting out those crisscross bands, depending on the manufacturer of the fabric that you use, you know how some fabrics, like quilting cotton fabrics is what we're working with, um, some quilting cottons will run anywhere from like 40 inches to 45 inches wide. If you're working with a fabric where that manufacturer tends to have a, a narrower width on the yardage, then you may want to uh, make the crisscross straps out of a different fabric because you might find that like the selvage creeps in to the width of this band, okay? You can always make it a little bit narrower too, so there are ways around that. I just thought I would mention it because I know different manufacturers cover different widths of fabric. If you do have a fabric that's like 44, 45 inches, you'll have plenty. <clears throat> Excuse me. And put it back in. Not showing up for you, okay. Okay. Okay, good. Well, I'm glad we were. Okay. Okay, good. So everything else is working. All right. So we talked about the bundle, two one-yard cuts, the pattern, the thread, the fabric marker. All that stuff is going to come in your bundle. And remember that the fabric are mystery cuts, which I just want to say thank you to everybody who has been tuning in for these Flash Sale Fridays because you are definitely helping us out. You all know that I own a brick-and-mortar store in Gainesville, Florida, Unfortunately, we have been closed since March. And so offering these bundles is allowing us to move some of the inventory that we have there that we can't otherwise sell um, to the public because we are not currently in the shop. It's not open. So this is really, really helping us. So we really appreciate it. And I'm glad that I'm able to put these bundles together for you all so that you also have some fun projects to work on. I'm going to move this out of the way so I can start with my demo steps here. Before I start with the demo, let's keep this shot real quick so that I can um, talk a little bit about the apron. Okay, so I went ahead and I told you that I cut from the straps two inches because I wanted this neckline a little bit higher. You can see that on the sides you have quite a bit of room. If you're smaller than me and shorter, you might find that this is like a lot of room. It might be looking like something like this on you and you might feel like you don't have enough coverage on the front side so you can always adjust with the crisscrossing of the straps okay with the length of them one by the pattern piece choosing the smaller size and then even when you get to the point where you're pinning it and trying it on if you still see that it's too long go ahead and make some adjustments there so we have the two pockets here I'm gonna take this off and show you the other side the reversible side 
they're both reversible sides. I'm just saying I'm going to show you how it's also reversible. So what I did in this case is that I used two one yard cuts of uh, coordinating fabrics, right? So <clears throat> whatever I cut out the pocket of this fabric, I put it on the other side fabric like this, right? Like they swap off. But this is also a good scrap buster. So if you wanted to make the pockets different and the crisscross bands different too, you don't have to use, you know, like I did where like the body on this side is the pocket on the other side. So that's another option. I think this is super comfy. I love that it doesn't have any ties or closures or anything. Sometimes the ties are cool because you can adjust it but I think this fits so many different body types and heights. My husband is a lot slimmer than me and this fits him just fine. The only thing is that I'll say like, because it crisscrosses over, right? Based on your hip measurement here, it's just gonna depend on how much coverage you have, right? So my hips measure about 47 inches and you can see that I still have all the way coverage to here so I could wipe my hands, I can put stuff in my pockets, even at a larger hip, um, circumference. Okay. So if, oh no, Facebook is freezing on us. Let me pop into Facebook and see what's going on. Or I'll look here on YouTube, see if I have some questions real quick. Uh, let's see. Lori says, how's the new Juki working for you? It's great. The little one is up here, so I'm going to do a little demo and I'll do some stitching on this one. My other one back here is the one that I've been using to crank through a little bit quicker on my projects. And then I've had some of you mention in previous um, live chats that I'm missing two machines here. Yeah, Are we good? Okay, so if you're catching us on Facebook, there seem to be some technical issues there. So you can either head over to the, uh, YouTube and go to the Crafty Gemini YouTube channel because it seems to be streaming fine there if you're watching us live. Or if not, try to refresh your page and see if that helps. But luckily, we are on two platforms. So if you're having issues on Facebook, just head over to the Crafty Gemini YouTube channel and you should see us the same way there without any issues because I see a lot of people are on right now and um, it seems to be working fine. Okay. So um, I was saying some of you have mentioned, hey, you're missing two machines back here, and I am, because they were being serviced. They're ready to pick up, but um, so many things where I buy my machines and where I have them serviced is two hours away from me. I just haven't had a chance to go down there yet, so I need to go pick them up, but they have been serviced, and then I'll have them back here. For those that were wondering, because I got a couple comments about that. Um, let's see. Mary says, I don't like ties on my aprons. I don't like it around my neck and this is great. So if you want even more room here, Mary, just leave the straps at their longest um, setting, you know, that the pattern comes in. And so I was going to say my husband's hips are a lot narrower than mine and this thing fit him perfectly. All it did was it gave him way more coverage, right? So like these two side pieces came like to almost to the back on him. So I think that it's so flattering and the fact that you don't have to take people's measurements to make them one of these, it would make a great gift, right? Coming up on the holidays, whether you're entertaining or you're not, or you're going somewhere, maybe you're entertaining outside. We're hoping that we can do that with like the fire pit and just have a couple friends outside. Um, this would make a really great gift if you're bringing a dish over. So to put it on, you probably already saw me. I just take it off and I'm trying not to mess with my microphone too much. So apologies. So you just drape it over your head and then you slip your arms through. Okay. So that. I mean, I really, really, really am liking this apron. And I'm not really a huge apron fan. Like sometimes I have some and I'll wear them and I've made several over the years. But let me share with you something else since you all know that I'm full-fledged gardener right now because fall and winter is like my favorite time to garden here in Florida. Lucky us. The instructions say that uh, if you want to gather up eggs from your chickens or harvests, to leave it separate like this, right? Because it's two layers. So look how much room I have here to gather up. I can put a ton of eggs, first of all, not a ton, maybe like a half dozen, in the pockets because they're nice and big. But I can go through and harvest, you know, tomatoes, peppers, all the things, and just bundle it up here and just walk inside because the two layers separate. So if you're a gardener like me, uh, I think this is gonna be like a go-to. And I can see that the pockets are nice and big, so I'm gonna start taking out like my pruners, um, little labels. I should have a little roll of twine or elastic too so that when I go out to check on my tomatoes and I see that they've grown super tall that I can, you know, tie them to the trellis a little bit for some support so I can take some tools here, but then I can gather up eggs and stuff from my garden. 
Isn't that cool? I think this is amazing and it's a good big bundle. And you know, yes, we would love to have like a cute little basket or a bag. I have all that stuff. I don't ever remember to take it out with me. So if I have the apron on, I know that I will be able to do that. So I'm like so excited to make a bunch of these. Uh, but let me check in real quick, see if anybody has any specific questions before I start showing you the other one that I'm working on. All right, let's see. How would this pattern work for someone who's petite? My mom is five foot three and I think she would love this. So like I said, um, you can adjust the crisscross bands in the back to make it, you know, closer up here, close up some of this. Then you can also adjust the length. So for me, and I, I'm almost five foot nine, I hemmed it at what it called for, I believe it was a half inch. And it's like maybe two and a half to three inches above my knees. My knees are down here. Okay. So if you wanted it to be a little bit shorter, you can always just cut a couple inches off of it. You know, but I think for an apron, you're probably better off to have more coverage than less, right? Unless it's obviously past your knees and then every time you take a step, it's gonna be kind of like getting caught on your knees. But like I said, I'm, almost, I'm like 5'9", and it doesn't reach my knees. It's still two to three inches above my knees. Uh, but the adjustments on it, it says for the small and the medium, can be made in the back. Other than that, I mean, it might look like a lot of fabric, but that's because my hips are 47 inches. If you're narrower, it's still, it, it, it has to do with the crisscross. Wherever the crisscross ends, that's where the fabric is going to start to hang. So it's just going to depend on whether or not they have more coverage in the hip area. And you can see that even at 47 inch hip circumference, I have a decent amount of coverage. And you can see that even if your hips are bigger than mine, look at that. You can still get a good amount of coverage. Okay? So I'm super happy with it. And of course, you know, I like to test out the things before I start raving about them and buying them to do these flash sale Friday bundles. But I'm glad that so many of you are in on this. The holidays are coming up and this would be a great project to make for yourself, even if not as a gift. That's kind of why I did it. I was needing something to like make myself feel happy about sewing and make myself something that I could use because I'm all about the functional projects. Do we have any questions for me? No. Okay, I can look them up. I just want to make sure everything was okay over there. Better now on Facebook? Okay. If you're having problems checking out with your order, there has been some changes. What is it to Brandon Microsoft Edge that is like causing some PayPal issues? So if you're using a device and you're using Microsoft Edge as the browser, it's like blocking you or telling you that it's like not secure or whatever that is. It has to do with a Microsoft Edge update. So if you can try accessing it from your phone, try a different um, web browser. If not, no worries. We've already had a couple people uh, email us. You can email us at bea at craftygemini.com. Let us know you want to check out. We can just invoice you separately. But for those of you that are getting that error, because everybody else is being, you know, they're able to purchase from our website just fine. We did dig into it and it turns out it's something with the new Microsoft Edge update and PayPal. It's like on that end. I don't know, whatever the connection is that's messing up. Okay. All right. Um, Donna says, this would keep me covered when I bake. I wear flour. <laughs> You're like me. That's awesome. Super, super fun. Totally have a lot of coverage. And sometimes I find that I'll try to like wipe my hand real quick just to grab something else. And I can see that my pants are not exposed. You know, I'll have enough coverage here or just keep a little towel in here that you can just use. Right. All right. So yeah, this does not come in kid sizes as far as I know. I know there's some other patterns out there that you can look up if you like the style. You can do just, you know, do some research on some crisscross apron patterns. We are selling it right now in the online shop as a part of the Flash Sale Friday bundle, okay? We should still have some left. Oh, we don't. Sorry, y'all, we are all sold out. Okay, well, thank you to everybody who got in on the bundle. We are gonna see, I know some of you have been asking for just the pattern itself. Um, now that we've sold out of these, we're gonna see if we can go ahead and restock um, the patterns. As soon as we do, we'll list them for sale on the website. Okay, so we will be selling the patterns individually. Just give us, you know, a couple days so that we can get that on order before listing it, okay? All right. Uh, yep. So sorry to everybody who's trying to grab a bundle. We added twice as many as we usually do because I thought that would be the case. I thought, you know, if I'm really into a project, I'm like, I know people will need this. They, they definitely are going to want to make this and it's reversible, right? And most of us have a yard of fabric of two different prints that match in our stash anyways, even if you don't want to use what you got in on the bundle. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and open this one. Okay. 
Okay, so yeah, so it seems like we're cutting in and out on Facebook, but on YouTube is fine. So if you don't want to deal with the technical issues, remember, just head on over to the Crafty Gemini YouTube channel, um, and you can catch us live there if you're watching it in real time, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and switch to the other shot so I can talk a little bit about this. Great. So here is, we're on with this, great. Yeah, that's perfect. Um, so here is another pattern that I'm working on slightly more muted than the one I'm wearing, <laughs> but super cute nonetheless. This is a little small scale floral and you can see this is one front piece or like one part of the apron, right? One side of it. And I've already went ahead and added the, the pockets to it. There is a placement mark here. Let me grab the pattern piece just so you all can see. It's supposed to be at a slight angle. Where did I put it? Anyways, I don't know where I put my pattern. Oh, here they are, the pattern pieces. I just want to show you this real quick. So when we cut out the piece, it's cut out on the fold. Okay, and this is all in the pattern piece. I wrote the word fold here since I traced mine out. But it has the little mark here for the pocket corner location because as you saw when I was showing you uh, the shot of me wearing it, the, uh, the pockets are at an angle, okay? So just keep that in mind that you will want to make sure that you're transferring those marks over to your fabric. So that's why we put in that fabric marking pen um, in your Flash Sale Friday bundle for those of you that snagged one. Okay, so here are the two pockets there. You see how I marked it, boom, boom. And then I just position the corner and then I top stitch around. So the pattern says if you want to add a little bit more body to the pocket itself, that you can use interfacing. So I'll say, I've done it both ways already. This one, the one that I'm wearing, I added the interfacing to it. And let me go ahead and take this off, just so I can talk about it. It is pretty comfy though, I didn't even feel like I had it on. So, if you want it to have a little bit more body, and by body I mean, it feels like two layers of a cotton fabric. Because what I used was Fashion Fuse, um, it's 100% cotton, fusible interfacing. I just fuse it to the back of the one fabric. Okay. You can see that I use my serger to finish off the top edge. You don't have to have a serger to make this. You can just fold it under twice or you can zigzag stitch the edge however you want. But like I said, I was looking for a project for myself, something that I could feel good about and I love perfect little seams and finishes. So I did go ahead and use my serger on it. Okay. But that's how the pocket is. So on this one, they're a little bit more stiff, not super stiff, but they have more body. Now on this one that I'm working on here, I don't have any interfacing on it, okay? I did go ahead and search the top edge and then folded it under. But again, you can just fold it under a quarter of an inch. The idea is you just want this to be, uh, not to have a raw edge at the top, okay? And then we just turn under the raw edge a quarter of an inch and press it. That's it. And then when you position it wherever you need it, then you can top stitch around. Okay. And remember, if you got it on the Flash Sale Friday bundle, check your emailed receipt because I included a link there to a tutorial that I found on YouTube that Nancy's Notions did a couple years back. And it's really, really good to give you the visual. So this is one side of the apron. Okay. And I did go ahead and use the contrasting straps here. So I did use one yard of both of these fabrics and I went ahead and saved my scraps so I can show you all one yard of each of these two fabrics and this is what I had left over. So you still have a little bit, okay, that you can use for scraps for other projects, you know, for linings on little zip pouches and stuff like that. So I always like to show people that so you can see like how much of that one yard of each print did you actually end up using. All right, so those were my leftover scraps. Then let's go ahead and try not to pinch myself because I have a pocket already pinned here. This is the other side of it. How cute is this? And I'm not really into like these, these muted natural colors and florals, but I think this is one is gonna be super cute. I haven't decided if I'm keeping this one for myself too or giving it as a gift. <laughs> I am having a lot of fun making these projects. So I hope that you all who got in on the bundle will enjoy making it as well. All right, so let's see. I'm um, just making sure. June says, I love aprons. I'm so happy that I got one. I'm glad that you got one too. Yeah, so Vanny is saying that it's much better on YouTube than Facebook. So hopefully you all that are watching on Facebook, again, if you're having technical issues or Facebook is messing up on you, just head over to the Crafty Gemini YouTube channel and you can find us live at the same time there. Okay, so this is the other pocket. I went ahead and pressed it under by a quarter of an inch 
and I have my mark already here and that's going to get pinned in place. I'm only going to do one at a time because I find like if I have pins on this side and pins on this side as I'm working my way around this sometimes I pinch myself. But you can see my mark, I placed it there. I'm going to go to the sewing machine now or I'll bring my sewing machine over here and that way I'm going to top stitch just about an eighth of an inch in all the way around. Okay, the key with this is going to be make sure that you've turned under the edge wide enough so that when you do come stitch here, the stitch is catching both of those layers and is not leaving you like a little gap in space at your pocket. Okay, so just be careful with that. And if you're wondering how I got these super crisp edges turned under, starch is your friend. I love me some starch and a hot, hot, dry iron. All right. Let me go ahead and bring this machine over, grab my foot pedal. And that way, hopefully you all can see kind of with my hands, how I'm like maneuvering things in order to stitch this around. Uh, let's see if that'll work. Something like that. Make sure that you have room to work because this is like a big U. So I'm gonna start on the innermost corner. And let's see if I can do this easily on this machine since I need to press the needle down button to get the needle to stop with the needle in the project every time I uh, want to pivot. So we shall see. All right. I'm going to also lengthen my stitch length, okay? Not like a piecing length, like two millimeters. It's a little bit too small. This is more like top stitching, although we are attaching the two pieces together. So I'm going to move... Uh, my stitch length, let's do three millimeters in length. That should be fine. I'm gonna back stitch at the top corner because that's where you're gonna be getting the most wear and tear when you're reaching in the pocket. Make sure I have my magnetic seam or magnetic pin cushion here. And I'm just eyeballing this. If you use a thread color that blends, you'll probably be able just to like watch where you're going and stay on the edge. See, I stopped and my needle is up. Do not move the fabric if that happens to you. Make sure that you go ahead and sink that needle into your project before you continue or before you start moving so that you don't get like jumpy stitches. All right. And is that working good for y'all? Apologies. For this. Okay, now let's go back at it. So I'm just trying to go slow around the curvier parts. And what I tend to do, I'm in a weird angle right here, but still, I usually will have this hand here anytime I'm sewing curves, and I'm kind of like tick, 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 going counterclockwise with it as the machine is stitching so that I can get nice even stitches but still going in this round orientation. Make sure you don't have any folded fabric underneath. And another thing is, remember I said I use starch to keep this folded edge under? That's going to come especially handy if you're not using interfacing to interface the pockets. I didn't find that I needed it, but I wanted to try it both ways so that I could, you know, share my experience with you all. So I can say, you know, especially for some of us if we're looking to uh, save time making the project and to cut costs, because of course interfacings are an additional cost, um, you don't have to use it. If you have starch already on hand, then you can go ahead and that, use that. You know, just start your fabric before you cut it, the pocket at least, and then um, start those edges under so you get nice crisp, crisp finishes on the edge of your pocket. All right, so I'm coming up to the other end here and I'm going to back stitch when I get to the top here as well to secure my stitches. Okay. So, trim this and you can let me know if we have any questions popping up while I'm... This machine, I got this question on Wednesday, it does not have an automatic thread cutter. Remember, this is like a beginner friendly intro machine. My other machines do, but it's lightweight and it's easy for me to throw up on here for these demos. All right, so that's one. Looks super, super cute. Oh, there's the tail. I'm gonna start pinning my other pocket into place. Obviously, I'm not gonna be able to finish this tonight live on here, but I at least wanted to show y'all and share some tips on these pockets, okay? 
Um, could you see that mark? Yes. So you saw where I took my fabric marking pen, okay, and made that line so that I know where to line up just the corner of the pocket. And as long as you have that corner right there, boom, that's it. It's oriented correctly and it's going to hang exactly where it should. Okay, let me grab my pins and see if y'all have any questions for me here. All right. Oh, Don says, cute Juki sewing machine. Thank you. All right. All right. So what I like to do, because we have the mark here, I'm going to start pinning in that direction because if you've pinned stuff before, especially a uh, single layer items like this, you probably know that if you started pinning here, by the time I got back around here, it would probably have migrated a little bit and been set off. Okay. So if you have a guideline, a notch, an orientation mark, pin there first so that then I can kind of smooth the fabric in this direction, but that the angle of where it's supposed to be placed still is correct. So that's just another little tip there. All right. I'm so happy that so many of you got these bundles, y'all. Post pictures of your fabrics, of the projects when you make these aprons. I'm going to love seeing this. I would love to see a cute set full and complete with my, um, the different oven mitt tutorials that I've done over the years. That would make such a cute little hostess gift to make the whole matching set. And if you want to preserve the, the original pattern sheet that you're getting in your bundle, just go ahead and trace off the pattern pieces like I did. They're not that much. They're just three pieces. Okay. So there I have this pinned. I'm going to grab the sewing machine again. Let me just pop in real quick, see questions. A K says, do you adjust the size of the interfacing to remove it from the seam allowance and reduce bulk? I did not on this one. That's going to also have to do with whether or not uh, the interfacing that you're using is lightweight or not. So because I used Fashion Fuse, it's literally like adding the super thinnest muslin fabric fuse to the back of your fabric. And when I do that, I can fold it easily and crease it super easily, just as I would one layer of fabric. So for me, that's not an issue. However, if you were using an interface and that was more like a medium weight or something stiffer that you know, okay, after I f fuse it to the back of the fabric and then fold this raw edge under and then stitch it to the apron where you think your fab or your machine might have issues stitching through that kind of thicker bulk there, then I would definitely cut the interfacing of the pocket at least three eighths of an inch shy. Okay, so that when you do fold it on the edge, it's just two layers of fabric without that added layer of interfacing. So that is a good tip for that, for sure. If you're using a medium weight, but if you're using like, uh, like I said, Fashion Fuse, which is what I like to use, it's a Bozel product. Uh, if you use the Pellon equivalent for it, like an SF 101, you won't have to. Okay, unless you know your machine really struggles sewing through bulk, but this is not really that bulky either. Okay, so keep that in mind. All right. Uh, June says it would be cute with holiday fabric. It would be super cute with holiday fabric. Hi, Brenda from Dundee, Florida. That's a neighbor. That's not too far from here. Uh, Lori's asking, what type of tracing paper do you use and do I sell it? So I like to use the Bozel Create, a, uh, what is it called? Create a pattern. I don't sell it because it comes in a long roll. It's really uh, awkward to ship. It's 47 inches wide and it comes like by five and 10 yard uh, lengths. And so we don't sell it. We sold it at our shop in person because we could have it there for people. Um, but you can use Swedish tracing paper. You can use medical examination paper rolls. They come in about 20 or 22 inches wide in a, in a big roll. Actually, I have a roll here. Let me grab it just to show y'all. This is this, and here's the creative pattern. So let me just bring this into the shot. So this is a roll of medical examination paper. So not super wide, but still wide enough for a lot of patterns, pieces, you know, different things. So they come like that in a big box and you can buy a bunch of these together. Um, but you can see the length difference. You see where that stops? And this is way longer. So this is my create a pattern. And again, as long as it's a lightweight paper that's pretty sturdy, that's not just going to shred on you and is translucent for you to be able to see through down to the lines to trace them, then it's going to work for this. So don't feel like you have to go out and spend a ton of money buying a specialty product. You know, even gift wrapping tissue paper would work fine. Okay. Great questions, y'all. Great, great questions. Let me grab my machine. All right. 
Oh yeah, Janet's saying my fashion fuse is on back order. When do I know when it'll be available? So Bozel and a lot of companies in the industry right now are so far back ordered on products. Um, seems like everybody's home and sewing, and so the shops and online stores cannot keep stuff in stock. We placed an order weeks ago, so we're hoping that we should be getting it soon. Ish, but as soon as we do get like the Dura Fuse and the Fashion Fuse back in stock, trust me, you will know. We will send out an email, and then I'm sure if I feature it in another, you know, live or Whip Wednesday or Flash Sale or whatever, we will um, let you all know. So apologies for that. Between the shipping delays and the manufacturer delays, it's a little tough right now. All right, let me, and I hope y'all can see that. Yep. Okay, I'm just gonna stitch this one down. I'm close to the edge. And if you've never attached anything like round like this or turned under edges, I want you all to see that it's not hard. It's pretty easy. But if you wanted to, I mean, you could just add like one wide long patch pocket to the to the apron or you can leave off the pockets altogether if you wanted to. You know, it's up to you. But I am so, so happy so many of you got this. We're going to be rocking our little crisscross aprons. Definitely post pictures on my Facebook page or tag me on Instagram. And then for those of you that are interested in the pattern, that is something that we can go ahead and restock. It's the weekend right now, but I should get those in this week that we can relist it on the website. For those of you that want to uh, check back this week to see about that. Okay, make sure I'm not doing nothing. Now, after you stitch this down, you absolutely want to give it a press. I don't have my iron set up right here, but that is definitely something you want to do to just have all the fabric edges lie flat, whoops, and um, set all those stitches into place. So you see what happens. Because I started sewing from that side, as I work my way around, this is where my guideline was. Nothing has moved on me. It is perfectly positioned exactly where my markings are. And assuming I marked everything correctly from the pattern, then I know I will not end up with a crooked pocket on my apron. Let me go ahead and backstitch this. Perfect. And I'm telling y'all, this little machine is a workhorse. It's the Juki LB5020. I am working on a video review of it. For those of you maybe looking for travel machines or a smaller machine for uh, a beginning sewist who wants them or who wants and needs a machine that they can grow with, you can see I do all the things on this little guy too. And it's nice and lightweight, but very, very sturdy. It sews through a ton of bulk. Okay. Oops, sorry for the screeching sewing machine. So I would give this a press, okay? And then I would layer the two pieces together, pretty sides touching. This is kind of weird to show here, but remember if you got in on the bundle tonight, check your emailed receipt. There's a link there for a tutorial, not by me, but it was done by Nancy's Notions and I found it and I thought, wow, this would be a great visual to supplement with, especially um, for those of you that feel like maybe the instructions, you won't be able to figure them out, but they're not hard. They're super straightforward. I always like to test it out anyways to make sure, you know? So this is how you would line things up, of course, where the straps change color here. Let me change this shot real quick. Um, right here where the straps are alternating colors at this seam connection, you definitely want to match them up so you get everything looking nice and crisp. It does have us press the, the seam allowances open, so I did that. And then you would sew, just following the instructions, down here, around the curve, you're basically not stitching anywhere that has an opening like this. And this is what allows you to cross over the bands and stitch it up. But remember I said, follow the directions and pin it first to try it out, okay? To test it on and adjust the length of any of these. All right, but that's it. Once you have these two pieces together, this is really the whole apron. You know, the pockets, the prep work and stuff takes a little bit longer than everything else, but this is absolutely a one day project. This is like a couple hours. If you've done stuff like this before, you will definitely be able to whip this up, okay? And then like I did, I surged the bottom edge. You don't have to, but just to turn under that hem one time, you can always double fold your hem Okay, and stitch it across. And remember what I did on the sample I was wearing, this one here. I went ahead and finished the hems separately so that I could still 
lift this part up and uh, gather up my harvests, my chicken eggs, and all that stuff. Okay? So you can see that's what I did there. I just searched straight across the bottom, folded it under, and top stitched it from here. So easy, super straightforward, and such a fun, fun crisscross apron project. All right, so I hope that you all uh, enjoyed getting some tips on this project that you'll be looking forward to getting your apron. Let's go ahead and switch to the other one. I'm gonna pop this baby back on. <laughs> Super quick and easy and no closures, no zippers, no nothing. There it is. I don't know if my straps are straight or not, but who cares? You get the idea. That's how it comes together. Okay, so thank you to everybody who got in on the bundle. Post pictures of your apron. I will definitely finish this one. Maybe next week for Whip Wednesday I'll have it, I, I for sure will have it done by Whip Wednesday, but then maybe I'll show you um, this one on. I haven't decided if I'm keeping it or if I should give it away. <laughs> um, let's see. The alphabet print is so cute. So remember I've been talking about the clammy uh, ruler recently? This is another print. This is like a graffiti uh, alphabet print by my friend Latifa Safir from Latifa Safir Studios. Uh, and I love it. I had some left over, so I used it for that. Okay, let's see. Um, all these conversations going on, no questions for me. All right, so that's that on uh, YouTube. Is anybody still on the Facebook? Were we able to get something going on over there? Yeah, okay, good. So I'm glad that the Facebook technical issues got fixed somewhat, it looks like. Okay, thank you, Kenya, saying a uh, uh, super awesome tip to pin at the notches beginning on the other side to prevent the shifting. Absolutely, try it out. Um, and the Juki that I'm using, Gail was asking, that's a, the LB5020. So I'll be doing a sewing machine review on YouTube coming up shortly on that. So you can check this machine out. Okay. And that's going to be that. Thank you, everybody, who got in on a bundle. Give this video a thumbs up. Share it on Facebook, on YouTube. And when you get your bundle and you make your crisscross reversible apron, post pictures and you can tag me on Instagram. I'm under Crafty Gemini. Do you have a question? Go for it. A question about backstitching. Let's see. He's looking for it. <laughs> he wasn't going to let me log off without answering the question. Rosalie says she has the pattern, but she hasn't done it yet. Maybe this will inspire you to take out some fabric and get started. It's such a fun, quickie project. I mean, it has, it, it's kind of both. It's like, it's quick and easy, but it also has little things that allow you to like go slow, you know, give everything a nice press, good creases, nice top stitching. What is it? So the question is, do I have any tips for back stitching? Because whenever she does, the fabric gathers up underneath the needle. So one thing could be the stitch length. If the feed dogs are pulling too little bit of a fabric through, it's going to be doing the same thing in the reverse of it. So that's one thing that I like to do for top stitching is lengthen it out to at least three millimeters, 3.2, something like that. Um, and then also sometimes when you're working with bulkier fabrics, if you're coming up like right at the bulky end of like a pocket or the edge of a hem or something, um, going one way, it's like smoother through the machine. So when you hit the back stitch, it kind of jumps up a little bit. I would just go slow so that you can kind of give the presser foot a little bit of help. So nothing is getting hung up on it. That could be an issue also, but I would say lengthen the stitch length, check also your presser foot pressure. So not the tension, but the pressure coming down like the chomp of the bite of the presser foot. Now, not all machines will allow you to adjust that setting, but if you have it on your machine, see if you can loosen up how tightly the presser foot is chomping down on your fabric, because that can also be adding to the amount of tension being put on. So it's grabbing your fabric, and when you hit backstitch, it's like holding onto it, so it's like all gathering it up. So try those couple of things. Uh, yeah, and that's all I can think of, because if you're not having issues going the other way, um, just try to change those couple of things and go slow so you can watch the machine and see exactly what it's doing. And, and then maybe if none of those tips help you, maybe look and see what else it's getting hung up on and maybe you'll be able to troubleshoot it like that yourself. Okay. 
Okay, um, that was it. That was the last question for me that you had. Okay, great. Well, thank you everybody for tuning in. Like I said, give this video a thumbs up. If you're on Facebook, share it with your friends. And remember, if you didn't get in on a bundle because we are all sold out tonight of the crisscross apron and mystery fabric bundles, check back this week because we will be restocking the, uh, the apron patterns themselves. We don't have any more of the bundles, but we can uh, restock the apron pattern itself if it's something that you want to give a try. And if you're watching us on YouTube, make sure that you give it a thumbs up and that you click the subscribe button if you're not yet subscribed to my YouTube channel. Thanks again for watching me, everybody, and y'all have a great weekend. Happy sewing!